Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and I want to thank you for joining us again on the broadcast or podcast. You know my prayer in all of these series that we've been doing, the Names of God, the Identity in Christ series, and in the future we'll be doing called the One Another series, is to help us grow and fulfill in our love for our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, the two greatest commands. In particular, this Identity in Christ series is focusing on the overflow of God's love in and through us and our maturing in our love for Him and fulfilling that first and greatest command so that we, as we love Him with all our being, we can then love ourselves, this series, Identity in Christ, and then all others. Now, you can listen to all of these. If you're just coming in, that just kind of cuts you up a little bit. You can go back and listen to these again or listen to them for the first time and, and share them. If you're listening at WJMM 99.1 Central Kentucky FM Christian Radio, thank you for that. Uh, but you can also listen at WJMM.com. Click on the, the podcast tab near the upper right and then the Love and Lordship links. It'll get you today and the previous two days. If you want more than that, you can go to loveandlordship.com. That's our ministry site from which the Authority of Love, the, the, this pro radio program, and our book, The Authority of Love, the second edition, arises from out of that ministry. So you can go there and get. you can click on the watch, the, uh, the read, or the listen tabs and get videos, articles, podcasts, and uh, you can also find our book there in the center of the homepage. Uh, love to hear from you on any of this. So contact me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Loveandlordship at gmail.com. Now, as I mentioned in the intro, our prayer and desire is that we are learning and growing in this series to know and love who we are in Christ so we can then truly love others. But that's preceded by our loving God with all that we are. That's why he gave him to get those commands to us in order. In this Identity in Christ series, there are three groupings of assurances that we have as we've shared about him in this series. We began with our acceptance and belonging in Christ. God has accepted us and we belong to him because of what Christ has done as we believe, not only as his sons and daughters and as Christ's disciples, but as joint heirs with Christ in the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, as well as who we are as integral parts of his body and family, the church. We then studied what it means to know that we are secure and safe in Christ, and we are now working through our identity in him as we find out from by his own words how much we are valued and loved by God in Christ and the Holy Spirit. I hope and pray that you are letting these truths sink in deeply as they will certainly change how you look at that person in the mirror. You know, Michael Jackson at least got some things right, right? The man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror, we could translate that, right? And as you see yourself, pray that you see yourself now according to God's truth as he sees you and defines who you are in Christ rather than what the enemy tries to lie and deceive you with according to how other broken people in this broken world will rate, rank, and compare us. We are of invaluable worth to God, and Jesus is the payment and the proof of this. So with that as kind of a background and an introduction, let's keep moving forward and dive deeper and see what that means and how it looks in our lives. 1 Corinthians 3.9 says, For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field, God's building. There's some more extremely important things that God wants us to know about who we are. In the last several messages, our focus has been on how significant and valued we are in Christ, our identity in Him. We are grafted in by grace through faith as branches in the vine, appointed and chosen to bear His fruit. We are God's masterpiece, recreated in Christ to do the good works He's prepared in advance for us to do in His strength. And we are literally a holy, pure dwelling place or a temple that God's Holy Spirit indwells. In line with all of these, we are also assured in His Word that as we abide and remain in Him, we are a co-laborer or a co-worker with God in His creation for His eternal purposes. I just read 1 Corinthians 3, 9. We'll go back and read verses 5 through 8. Not only are we equipped and chosen to join in this eternal work to point others to Christ, 
and they could join with us, but we need to recognize the value is placed upon us so our laboring with him is not in vain. I.e., in other words, we don't miss his purposes and his will. He goes on in second letter to the Corinthians in chapter 6, verse 1, and talks about what it looks like to live out his purpose and his will. He has a great purpose and desire to save every person who has ever lived while giving each of us the freedom of choice to accept or reject his calling and his work of grace and salvation. And get this, he has called you and me to join him in this eternal endeavor. That's incredible that we get to work alongside God to help others know him and come and join us in that work. Listen, no matter what you've done, no matter what you're facing or where you've been, he has a purpose for your life. He calls you to come and walk with him and work with him. Christ made it so that you could. Remember, he will finish what he started in Christ. Philippians 1.6, which says, I am confident, being confident that of this one thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it, will, will see it through until the day of completion on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. I ask often, I do it because it's the most important thing. Do you know Jesus Christ? Are you then pointing others to him and helping them to know him as Savior and walk with him as Lord? Are you giving him the access to your life by your choices for him to finish his work in and through you? I had the privilege a few months ago to share a message in a workshop at a wonderful church here in Kentucky. I shared on the true authority that we have in Christ. I had two single people approach me after the message, and they were both encouraged and yet concerned as the focus was more on relationships and marriage because that's what I've been asked to share on. And they were both single. One had been single all of her life. The other one had a husband who had left her with two beautiful children. My response to them was this, as it is with all people, our first and most important identity is simply that we are in Christ. Single, married, single again, widowed, whatever it may be. Everything else flows from this. Our singleness, our dating, our marriage, our parenting, our family, even Christ's family, the church, has to flow out of this identity in Christ. I said, so why do you allow the world to rate or rank you? Because you are single or married or are not. They were encouraged to keep pressing forward in their walk and identity in Christ and know they were being and would continue to be used of him for his kingdom and glory as they allowed him to do so. That's why we're doing this series on identity in Christ so that you and I can know and love who we are apart from anything else the world says or has to offer in order for us to be truly confident and content and therefore humble in him. Now with that said, the simple yet profound significance in Christ today is that all of who we are in him is literally and spiritually already seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. Ephesians 1, 18 through 23 in chapter 2, verses 4 through 7 talks about this, that we're already there even as we walk this earth, just like being a citizen of heaven. This is part of it. We are seated with him in the heavenly realms in order to carry out his eternal purpose for his kingdom. That, that, that's really amazing if you think about it. And nothing or no one on earth can keep us from this position spiritually, literally reigning with him. But remember, this only happens in him and as we walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. Go back to previous messages where we talked about there's, you're not condemned. But it's not just because you said, I believe Jesus. It's because you walk not according to the flesh anymore, but according to the spirit. Romans 8 one through eight. I pray you know Christ and are abiding in the here and now in your day-to-day -day walk with him and know that you are also, while you do that, reigning with him in the heavenly realms in his spirit. That's an incredible identity and he loves you so much that he made it a reality. We continue with Paul in Ephesians finding our wonderful identity in Christ in chapter three, verses 11 and 12. Here we're told that because of Christ's sacrificial grace to us, we can and should approach the very presence of God. We can walk, the veil was torn from top, God tore it. 
coming down to meet us and open the way up for us to go right into the Holy of Holies, into his very throne room. That's never been possible, never could be, but for Christ. Think about all the precious blessings we have been given and all the ways we've been united with God in Christ and the Holy Spirit as we are fully accepted, secure, and of great value to God in Jesus. Why would we allow the world or culture to define us in any way other than what he has done and what the truth of his word has declared us to be? Not only what we are declared to be and that he dwells in us, purified by the blood of Jesus so that his spirit can do so, dwell in us, but we can come right into his presence boldly, confidently, humbly, and be assured that we are received by him and he hears and loves us. I want to close with this scripture that reinforces what we've just talked about and who we are in Christ and the access we have to God, the Father himself, right into his very presence. Hebrews 10, 19 through 25, reinforces that Christ is our forever high priest and is always interceding for us before God the Father and ushers me, you, and all who truly believe in him right into the very presence of God. How's that for value? How's that for identity? Do you know him in this way? And are you availing yourself of all that he has made you to be and given to you? Do you know Jesus as Savior and Lord? Here's our action items. Read the scriptures in this message and ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number two, journal what you've learned about your identity in Christ in this episode. Number three, describe in your own words what it means for you to be a co-worker with and in Christ for his kingdom. And finally, number four, write down what it means for you to reign with him right here, right now, to actually enter right into God's presence in the heavenly realms and reign with him. It doesn't mean what we tend to think it means. If you go back in our book and other places where we talked about this, we learn to love and lead his way. Join us again tomorrow and we'll explore how this identity should ultimately be lived out and displayed in our lives. If we truly believe all that we are in Christ, and we should because he's faithful and never lies, then it should prompt us to act accordingly. Check it out tomorrow and invite family, friends, loved ones, and enemies to join us so they can hear who they are in Christ. Now, again, go to loveandlordship.com. You can click on the icon in the middle to find our book, The Authority of Love, the second edition. You can uh, email me at loveandlordship at gmail.com. Love to hear from you. Thanks for those who have. Love it. Also, on the the, uh, website there, loveandlordship.com, you can click on the blue Give tab near the upper right. If the Lord is leading you and showing you that we are a kingdom fruit ministry, would you join us in that? And uh, you can click. It takes a minute or so. You can give one time or ongoing. We thank you very much for that. And and know that all donations are tax deductible. You can also give on the cash app, cash.app forward slash dollar sign, love and lordship all together, both L's capitalized. You can do it by mail. Love and lordship. Send it to love and lordship. 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. And if it's not us, keep praying until the Lord shows you who he would have you partner with, and then be faithful and obedient to do that. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day, and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser Encounter next at 1245. Greg Horn and Hope is here. I'm Greg Williams, and you're listening to The Authority of Love.